Okay, uh, I believe this will be the final installment of the normal tour. Um, maybe some will trickle in down the road. Uh, we'll obviously keep you updated. Um, but let's get started. So we're starting at a relatively high magnification view of the feline retina. Again, recognize the, uh, the tapetum. And the vitreous is to the left, so that's inner. This is the sclera. We're very close to the optic nerve, so we can move... Uh, without a whole lot of motion sickness uh, to the to the outflow and uh, we're gonna follow the light um, so we're gonna start uh, with the tapetum it's not part of the retina proper but the lights gonna hit the tapetum in this area and and go uh, backwards for a second pass so here's tapetum the light hits it goes back through the um, non pigmented retinal pigment epithelium. Remember, it is still called the retinal pigment epithelium even if it is not pigmented because it is over the tapetum. The RPE must not be pigmented for the tapetum to function. So, the light reflects back through the RPE, um, which is not pigmented in this region, and it stimulates the rods and cones, which is the outermost layer uh, of the neural retina. The RPE is uh, the outermost layer, but remember embryologically this is where the uh, optic cup invaginates and forms a potential space between the what was the inner layer of the optic cup, which is the neural retina, and the outer layer of the optic cup, which is the retinal pigment epithelium. Both are from um, neural ectoderm, and again, it is a helpful thing to remember when you're trying to remember where retinal detachment happens or somebody's asking you about the different embryonic origins of, for example, the iris and, um, excuse me, the iris stroma uh, and, and the retina. Um, so, RPE one more time, photoreceptor outer segments, which are the rods and cones. Then here, it's a, more of a, of a suggested line. It doesn't pop out necessarily in many uh, standard preparations, but this is the outer limiting membrane. Um, and you don't need to know these details, but it's basically tight junctions of, um, of Mueller cells and horizontal cells that, uh, excuse me, of Mueller cells that hold, uh, hold the, the retina together. Uh, they also will, will get there, but they also make up the inner limiting membrane. So imagine that there are cells, you can't see them doing this, but they sort of span the width and make these thin uh, membranes through their tight junctions to hold everything together. The nuclei of the photoreceptors are the outer nuclear layer. Um, we can't get quite that close, but if you if you scan around, you'll see that some of them have a little cleavage plane in them, making them look like hamburgers or little Pac-Mans, um, and that can be used in trying to distinguish these from, say, a lymphocyte if you have a lot of retinal atrophy or retinal inflammation. Again, you don't need to worry about those details, um, but just be aware uh, that there are some characteristics that can help you sort this out. So again, outer nuclear layer are the nuclei of the photoreceptors. This whole thing is the same layer of cells, but there's a inner, li excuse me, outer limiting membrane that wraps around and sort of makes a distinction between the outer segments and the nuclei. Then we've got the outer plexiform layer. The plexiform layers of the retina are the synaptic layers. So the axons of the photoreceptors are coming this way, and the dendrites of the inner nuclear layer are, are synapsing right here. So that leads very quickly to the inner nuclear layer, and this is where all the sort of second-order neurons are. So this is the, the bipolar cells, the amacrine cells. You don't need to know specifically what they do uh, within each subdivision. Just know that these neurons are modulating the signal generated by the photoreceptors before they finally get processed by the ganglion cells where the final impulse that's going to go into the optic nerve is generated. So we've got the uh, inner nuclear layer, another synaptic layer called the inner plexiform layer, again axons of the inner nuclear layer uh, synapsing with the dendrites of the ganglion cells which are here so ganglion cells are really the only cells of the retina that look like a classical CNS neuron. Uh, if you guys remember that from your uh, 
from your previous CNS courses, or maybe you're getting into that now. So they're kite-shaped. They've got granular um, uh, cytoplasm, which is filled with nissel substance. Again, you don't need to know that for this course. Hopefully, it was covered elsewhere. Um, and that's what they look like. You will see other cells in the area of the ganglion cell layer. Just be aware that not they're not all ganglion cells. We pretty much rely on the kite-shaped and basophilic nature of them to say that they're a ganglion cell. And then the ganglion cell axons form the nerve fiber layer, where uh, in the dog there, in most species they are not myelinated, but in the dog become myelinated near the optic nerve head. Again, you don't need to know that detail. That would come up in clinics, but um, in, in interest of thoroughness, we'll talk about it. But this is a cat. Um, so nerve fiber layer is heading towards the optic nerve head uh, and out the optic nerve. And then here we've got the inner limiting membrane, which is not always very distinct and again is tight junctions of Mueller cells that sort of hold uh, everything together, um, making a delineation between the vitreous here and the retina. So we move towards the optic nerve head. Let me zoom out a titch. And we've got a little artifact here where things got a little hyper-eosinophilic. Uh, remember that cats will have an optic pit sometimes, which is normal. Uh, again, that would be more of a clinical uh, thing for you guys to worry about down the road, but this is normal in a cat. And the nerve fibers of the nerve fiber layer run through the lamina cubrosa. We'll take another peek at that because it's so much fun. So here are the parallel thin beams of collagen, which are continuations of the sclera. The holes allow the the cables, if you will, of the optic nerve to come out. And now we've got uh, the optic nerve proper, which is identical to white matter of the CNS. And we can look towards the edge, and we can see the various layers of the of the meninges. We've got the, the delicate pia mater, which doesn't jump out here, the arachnoid, which is the more cellular layer. And then if we move towards the back, we can see uh, the tail end of the dura mater, which would again progress up through the <clears throat> through the orbit and back into the uh, into the cranium, uh, meeting up at the optic chiasm where the crossover happens. Again, not rel relevant to the histology here, but uh, that's where that's where everything's heading. And then just for fun, take a quick peek at the non tapetal retina, just to point out the pigment of the RPE. Uh, that's taking a little while to get cleared up, but you can see even in this digitized bit that you've got pigment, and this is a little tented. We talked about that being an artifact. So pigmented RPE where there's no tapetum, and this is the non-tapetal retina. That concludes the tour of the normal vertebrate eye, uh, and installments about some of the pathology and lesions will follow uh, in the next couple of days. Enjoy, and thanks for listening.